Hi, in this video I'm going to be looking at what my favourite lens is. Join me. Well, hello and welcome to a windswept North Cumbria today in the beautiful North Cumbrian countryside. It's really fantastic to be back online again and today I'm going to be looking at what my favourite lens is. Not necessarily the best lens but my favourite lens and why it's my favourite. So I'm going to have a rundown on some of the lenses I own and we'll have a look at uh, what makes them special to me. Now no doubt you're going to see this, I've had, it's so windy I've got the dead cat on there and it keeps on bobbing into view so if it comes in just ignore it a little bit but uh, it's a very very windy day so hopefully it's keeping the, uh, the noise down a little bit. I'm going to start off with why these lenses are my favourites. I've owned lenses of all sorts of descriptions over the years. As a professional photographer when I was shooting Canon I had a huge host of L series lenses which cost thousands of pounds. They really were the tools of my trade, they were workhorses. But now that I've given up running the, the business as such and I've gone on to micro four thirds lenses, I'm not looking for less quality. I really do want the quality but I don't justify spending thousands on lenses just to take the photographs I'm taking. And I I don't think people need to necessarily spend those many thousands. Now if you're doing it as a, as, a, as a profession, you do need to be investing in that. When I was shooting hundreds and hundreds of people a day when I was doing high volume photography, it was really important to have reliable, good quality equipment, which wasn't going to let you down and was going to give consistent results all the time. But now I have the ability to take more time, but also my priorities have changed. Where I was taking uh, high volume shots before, or taking portrait shots, or doing commercial shots, it, weight wasn't a particular worry, size wasn't a particular worry. But now that I'm trekking around the place and enjoying myself, I'm, no, I'm more interested in having something which is compact and lightweight. So what do we start on? Number five. Number five is this one. This is my Olympus 40 to 150 f4 to f5.6 lens. It's the R lens, the MSC which is a very, very good little lens. It's small, it's light, it's plasticky, so what? What it does have is really, really sharp image results and really, really good contrast. It costs it next to nothing in lens terms, so therefore, if you're not really worried if you take it out and break it, it's not a lens I use often. It's quite a long focal length, and although the, uh, it is a usable lens, it's something which sits in the camera case, and as I say, it's not heavy, it's easy to use, and it's a wonderful medium-reach uh, telephoto zoom lens, which can get you some fantastic results, giving the equivalent of an 80 to 300 millimeter zoom lens on a full-frame camera. The other thing I like about this is it's small, it's light, it's compact, it's tiny, and even if fully extended, it's not a particularly big lens. Really worth having. It's not the best lens on the market, but so what? I, did a, I haven't done a review on this one, but I have done a review of its bigger brother, the 75 to 300 lens, so have a look back through this, the videos for that one. Number five, well worth it. Next on the list is this one. This is the Lumix F. 25mm f1.7 lens, about £150 in the UK to buy, again small, light, does have a metal um, plate on the back though, so that's a good advantage on this one. It's got some criticism about focus problems, but I've never really had problems on this one over there. The good thing about it is it's equivalent to the full frame 50mm lens, which used to be the standard lens on cameras. Now I have done a review of this one, you'll find the link above, so have a look at that. But this, number four on my list, well worth having. If you haven't got one, go out and buy one, it's really worth it. Whether you use, you're shooting Lumix or Olympus cameras, it's worth having. If you can push to the Olympus 1.8 version, I would say that that is a better lens. Although it is almost twice the price. It pays your money, it takes your choice. In at number three is my favourite little portrait lens. This is the minuscule little 45mm f1.8 Olympus Prime. It's a great lens. It's crystal clear. It's super contrast on it. It's just, it, it's so small, it's unbelievable. Throw it in your pocket, throw it in your camera bag, and take it anywhere. But for portrait work, it's unbelievably good. Nice shallow depth of field from the f1.8. Yes, again, not the, not the fastest lens on the market and certainly not the most expensive, but again, wonderful at what it does. Number three, got to be 45mm f1.8 from Olympus. Well, in at number two, it couldn't be anything else other than this. this is, it's got to be. This has had so much air time on my videos, it's untrue, this little lens. This is the 14mm f2.5 from Lumix. <sighs> what can I say about it? I've had two of these. I've had a, a Mark 1, which I've got in my hand at the moment. I had a Mark 2, and 
they are just a great tiny little lens there are a couple of drawbacks when you're going doing video work for instance on some of the older lumix cameras when it comes to the uh, image stabilization but insofar as stills photography absolutely superb it is a really really good lens insofar as what it does it's just small light fantastically made solid little thing even if it is plastic again metal uh, connecting ring on the back metal mountain plate what can i say about it about 130 pounds to get second hand and they're well worth getting again beauty of these keep them in your camera bag they don't weigh anything they're tiny they're small well worth it now don't forget if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so on the link below and if you want to keep on getting updates and notifications of when new videos come out hit the little bell and the all underneath it and that will give you notifications through whenever I produce a new video for you to see and finally of course if you enjoy these videos there's a PayPal link buy me a coffee underneath it really does come in useful to keep the channel going now before I tell you what my favorite lens is as I say not necessarily the best there are better lenses on the market but my favorite lens the one I go to the most I'd have a look at a couple of notable mentions start off with this one this is the wonderful little lumix 100 to 300 f4 f5.6 zoom equivalent on full frame to a 200 to 600 mil lens but look at the size of it tiny small comes with a little lens cap even with a lens cap on it's not a huge lens again you'll find a link to my review on this lens a little bit uh, above this is the mark one again the mark two there's lots of comments on that video about the difference between the mark one and mark two superb lenses again inexpensive for what they are, small and lightweight, and very, very useful. Not one of the go-to lenses, hence why it's in my um, notable mentions. Notable mention two. I did again, I did a video on that. There's a link up there, lots of links to the other videos. Please go back and watch them. This, this I bought specially for the YouTube channel. I didn't particularly want the lens, but a lot of people have used it and I wanted to see what it was like, and uh, it was a good comparison. This is, unbelievable this is a little 12 to 32 lumix lens f5 to f5.6 tiny little thing with this 37 millimeter front front thread undoes into not much anyway when it's going between the 12 and 32 mil wonderful little range to use that's what 24 to 62 mil in full frame terms but tiny if i keep it on the front of the camera why is this not amongst the the, uh, the chosen ones well it covers a range which i use on other lenses anyway it's not my go-to but it's great just to keep on the camera to carry around not one of my best ones but do you know what i've fallen in love with it since i bought it and although i bought it for the youtube channel i've kept it for myself so a really good lens on that one third notable mention is this and again there's been a review on this one uh if you have a look the links above this is again a lens I wasn't necessarily um, that keen on the idea of it first, but it was so cheap. I think I got it for about £129, brand new. And this is the Sigma. It's the 60mm f2.8 uh, prime lens. Strange little barrel on the, on the focus and strange shiny sort of texture on this. But it was one of those things I bought and thought, well, do you know what? For £129, it's probably worth it. Comes with a lens hood on. Uh, as standard came with a nice pouch as well a really good quality pouch on that excellent little lens not particularly small not particularly light in comparison to micro four thirds lenses but again not heavy either but it's again one of those things if you're doing close portraits if you're doing headshots rather than full portraits this is a lens it's equivalent again to 120 mil on a full frame which is towards the other end of what i've been doing on portraits but it's a really good for getting tight headshots can't knock it here we and so here we are thanks very much for staying the course i'm now going to tell you what my 
favourite lenses. But I can't actually because there's two. And one of them I can't show you because I'm actually being videoed on at the moment. This is the 17mm f1.8 Olympus lens. I bought this specifically to do videos with um, from MPB a little while ago. And again, it's a lens which has just been on almost every video I've shot. It's fantastic. It's really, really well made. It's solid. It's superb quality from it. I love the fact that it's got the um, the, the clutch uh, manual focus ring which you can just pull backwards and forwards and get into manual mode. I just love the quality of what it does. I love the way it feels on the camera. There's nothing I can knock this lens on. Again as a review to the um, 17 to the 17mm lens above go and have a look at that but this is my joint favourite lens. So if this is a joint favourite that means there's another favourite. And this is it. This is the Lumix 12 to 60 f 3.5 to 5.6 zoom lens. This is a kit lens on an awful lot of the Lumix cameras. Now, as I said before, it's not the le best lens in its class. It's nowhere near as good as the uh, 12 to 40 Olympus zoom lens. So why is this one my best lens? Well, it's my best lens because it's the lens that I will use for almost all of my normal photography uses. Again, light, it, this, fair enough, it's a small camera. Reasonable plastic, it does have a metal mount of course, which makes it good. Um, even fully extended out, it's not a particularly long lens. It's the sort of lens which you keep on the camera, it's easy. But, but the best thing is, compared to something like the Olympus Zoom, which as I say I love, this thing I can afford to damage. I don't want to damage it, I don't go out my way to damage lenses. But if this did get damaged, I'd go out and buy another one quite easily. The Olympus, well, you'd want to keep that a little bit more careful on things. And sometimes when you're, when you're jumping over rocks and things like on, on the Hadrian Wall videos, or if I'm out in the countryside, these are the sort of things which can get damaged. This though, the quality is fantastic. It's fast enough for almost all normal needs. It covers that essential range which all photographers, all general photographers use. Because this has got the equivalent uh, 12 to 60, this has got the equivalent of a 24 to 120 in a full frame. That's a great range and it covers all the normal general photography range. It doesn't get you into the specialist stuff, but that's why you buy the other lenses. That's why you buy the specialist lenses. Is it the best portrait lens? No, it's not quite fast enough for what I wanted to do. But it really is good for going out in the countryside, for taking photographs of general uh, um, landscapes, architecture, anything I wanted to do. It fits 99% of all my photography needs. So that's it. My favourite two lenses, the 17mm and the 12 to 60 What are your favourite lenses and why? Do you ever sit down and think why your favourite lens is your favourite? Do you ever sit down and think if you'd like something to uh, replace it and do something slightly different with it? Drop me a comment below. I'd love to read about those. So, hopefully the wind hasn't been too bad today. If it has, I apologise. It's one of those days where you just can't get um, easy photography done, easy videography done because of the, because of the condition. But hey, this is Cumbria. This is the beauty of living in one of the most beautiful parts of the world. So, if you enjoyed it, drop me a subscribe, drop me comments below, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate the thumbs up. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, keep on taking your camera with whichever lens that you use. Take it out, take photographs, and enjoy your photography. See you next time. Bye-bye.